good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever time you're watching this video. This is Lars, and as promised, this is lesson number one from Lessons from Dad. If you missed my last uh, video, which I hope you didn't, um, that uh, was kind of an explanation of what I'm doing here, uh, as uh, you may have known uh, from that. Uh, my dad, he uh, went to go be with Jesus a couple months ago, and uh, he's no longer with us. And uh, as promised, I said that I would be sharing some lessons with you folks about uh, different things that he taught me throughout my life. So this here is lesson number one. And uh, what uh, I'm going to be showing you today, and this is in honor of my father, because uh, my dad, he was a uh, painter for 35 years in a painter's union. Uh, it's all pretty much all he did. He was a butcher when he was a teenager, worked for a butcher shop. Um, but uh, as soon as he could, he went into the trades and uh, became a journeyman painter. Probably uh, one of the best uh, painters that I've ever seen in my life. Um, and, I, and I know I'm biased because I'm his son. But uh, that man could work miracles with paint. Uh, he could make anything... He could make a piece of trash look beautiful with uh, his brush and his roller. He never sprayed. Uh, he wasn't a sprayer, but uh, he did roll and uh, brush uh, with absolute perfection. And in all that time, he actually taught me. Uh, I will try to find a photo and put it up on this video, but maybe I won't have the ability to find the photo. When I was uh, five years old, he took me on my first painting job, and uh, he taught me as much as he could. Uh, I can't say I learned everything that he knew because that man was brilliant with the paintbrush. But uh, anyway, uh, he brought me up into trades as well, and I learned how to paint. I even worked for a journeyman uh, painting outfit, a uh, union painting outfit for a number of years and uh, a couple of non-union places. So I do have a lot of experience in painting and hanging paper. Uh, my dad actually was uh, an instructor for a place called NIPTI. I don't even know if it's still around anymore. Northern Illinois Painting or Drywall Institute. Uh, that's in Illinois. Um, and uh, he was a paper hanging instructor. He could hang paper as well. Vinyl, paper, whatever, whatever you needed. He was very good at it. And uh, he taught me how to hang paper as well. But uh, anyway, so this first lesson is obviously in honor of him. And I thought, what a great way to get started. But to uh, let you folks know what the best brush to use if you're starting a painting project. Now, folks who have never been a painter they don't really know they'll they'll run out to you know home depot or big box store menards or whatever you have in your area and you'll probably pick up whatever is cheap or whatever but i'm here to tell you that paint brushes can make or break a paint job um when you choose a paintbrush, don't be skimpy don't buy the cheapest thing you can find don't buy that little cellophane pack of 10 different brushes that you just want to throw away if you want your job to look like crap then fine do that if you're if you're trying to make your job look like crap great but if you care about what you're painting and that's going to be another lesson too um probably one of the biggest lessons my father ever taught me and i'll put that in a future video but one of the biggest lessons is, is whatever you do you put your heart into it you do it you know, so that's a little sub lesson inside this lesson. So if you're going to be doing a paint job, maybe you're painting your living room, your kitchen, or your dining room, or maybe your friend's house, whatever you're doing, and you're going to start painting, you got to have a good brush. Having a good brush at the start is the way to go. Now, there's basically two different types of brushes out there. One is a synthetic material brush, which is what they call nylon polyester. And then a second type of brush is a uh, horse hair, okay? So I'm going to show you both of those right now. Uh, the uh, brush that I recommend for anybody, anybody who's going to be painting is a uh, two and a half inch angle sash. Now there's a couple of very important things about this brush. Number one, it's got a wooden handle. You don't want those plastic handles because they're very light, easy to drop. They're just they're junk they're garbage so brushes always come in 
a protective sleeve if you buy a decent one. This brush here is probably about 15, 20 bucks when I bought it. And uh, to be honest with you, it'll last you a long time. This brush is actually uh, probably a year old for me. This one here is a Purdy. The manufacturer is Purdy XL. And uh, they're not paying for this video or anything like that. I'm just giving you an idea of the type of manufacturers that are out there. There's Purdy. There's uh, Sherwin-Williams Proval. Uh, you've also got this one here, which is a Baker. Um, but anyway, you can find some decent, you can find some decent uh, brushes that uh, they'll run you in that range, that price range. You can probably look them up on your big box website. But uh, the first type is your nylon polyester. The nylon polyester angle sash. This is probably the most used brush of all professional painters. It's two and a half inches wide, probably about quarter inch thick, and uh, it has an angle to it. Okay, that's what you're looking for. When you're looking to paint something, all right, if you have a straight brush, you can't get the edge that you're looking for in order to keep that cut line on whatever it is you're trying to cut. And anybody who's worth the salt as a painter knows that you avoid using masking tape at all costs. It wastes time and only use it if you absolutely need to. And that means that if you're a painter, well, most of y'all probably aren't, but if you are, you know, you don't want to be using masking tape because it takes too much time to put it on. It takes too much time to take it off. You can get paint bleed underneath the tape and then it's going to look like crap anyway. So the best thing to do is to do it right in the first time. Take your time when you're painting. And maybe I'll give you some lessons on painting later too. But right now it's just giving you an idea of a brush. And when you're taking your time, you'll get a nice straight edge. And the way to get that straight edge is to have an angle on your brush. So always choose an angle sash if you're looking to cut. Now you might be asking, maybe you don't know anything about painting at all. What is cutting? Cutting is the paintbrush work versus the roller work. When you're trying to paint a wall, you have an edge. And either that edge is going to be met with another edge. So maybe you have two walls that you're doing. Or maybe that edge is matching a ceiling, meeting with a ceiling. Or maybe that edge is down by your baseboard. But whatever your case is, you've got an edge. Your roller cannot get up to that edge accurately without making a sloppy mess. So in order to cut when you paint is to use your brush to cut into the corner, to paint the corner in a way that is nice and straight, clean, neat, and paint free. I'll give you a little demonstration. I don't have any paint on this brush, but basically what cutting looks like is to put your hand up against the corner and then weasel it down just a little bit like this. And all you're doing is just making sure that the paint gets into the corner but doesn't get on the other surface. So if you're doing a ceiling, most of your ceilings are going to be white. Uh, if you're doing two different colored walls, your corner will probably have, you know, a fairly sharp edge. And the way to get that edge is to use an angle sash brush very slowly, very evenly down that corner. Now, as you can see, these, these bristles are pretty tight. As I said, this brush is a little bit old, so some of the bristles are getting a little weak. But a nice, tight, br brand new, fresh brush is going to be very tight in here. And when you put paint on it, that paint is also going to help keep those bristles nice and tight. So get yourself an angle sash two and a half inch angle sash is the best way to go if you're trying to cut into corners cutting edges so on and so forth if you have a smaller job they also have a one inch or a one and a half inch angle sash and this one here happens to be for oil paint but this is just basically the same type of brush but it's just smaller and that's for smaller jobs maybe you're doing just a very small piece of trim maybe you're doing a little wainscoting around your um around the uh you know when, when you have a, a wainscoting box um 
You might want to paint with something even smaller. And that's all the differences with between the two is one is two and a half and one is one or one and a half. This one here, just so you understand, this is the second type of brush. This is a horsehair brush, okay? And horsehair is used only for oil paint. I have another uh, example of a horsehair here. This is a two and a half inch horsehair. And these are basically, you can tell the difference between a uh, horsehair and a nylon polyester, mostly by their color. Okay, this is also a two and a half inch angle sash, but this is used for oil paint. Now, what is the difference between these two brushes? Like, let's say you're doing a project at home and you say, well, what brush should I get? First of all, you. You're going to listen to my advice. You're going to say, well, I'm not going to buy the cheapest one out there. You're going to get something a little more expensive. Well, guess what? These are more expensive than these. Go figure. Why? Because these are horsehair. So you're going to think, oh, I'll pick up a horsehair and I use it. Now, can you actually use a horsehair on your job on the painting a wall? Well, if you're using a water-based paint and you use horsehair, you'll ruin the bristles. The main difference between these two brushes is a nylon polyester brush can be placed in water. A horsehair bristle should never, ever, ever be placed in water. You'll ruin the bristles faster than you can imagine. So only use a horsehair brush when you're using oil paints because oil paints are cleaned up with paint thinner. So this will never ever, in all the years that I have this brush, this will never ever touch water. And that's what keeps this edge nice and sharp. As you can see, this is a very nice sharp edge on this brush. And it will always stay that way as long as I never let it come into contact with water. So this brush is only used for oil-based paints. And it's only cleaned with paint thinner, lacquer thinner, xylene, whatever you need to use, whatever you need, whatever your solvent is for the paint that you're using. Okay, there's a number of those. I'm not going to get into that here. But just know two kinds of brushes, nylon poly and horsehair. This is used for oil. This is used for water. Both are two and a half inch. Both are angle sash. Both are used to make very precise cuts on your walls. This one does not go in water. This one can go in water. Most paint that you put on a wall is going to be water-based, unless you have some specific need why it wouldn't be. So 90% of all the work that you'll ever do is going to be water-based, so you'll never need a china bristle or a horsehair, they call them china bristles or horsehair bristle brush, because a china bristle brush will just be ruined in latex paint. Most homeowners, most DIYers, you're going to be using water-based stuff. Stick with your nylon poly brush for that. Don't go out and spend the extra money on horsehair. You'll just ruin it. And a good nylon poly brush, 15 20 bucks, wherever you get it, however much you get it for, will do the same job in a water-based solution there. Um, the lastly, I just wanted to mention uh, straight bristle brushes, you know, because I always talk about these angle sashes, right? Well, they are. they do have the straight bristle where there's no angle to it and the only reason why you would use those is whitewashing a fence something where you can't use a roller I've never in my professional experience had to use a flat bristle a flat surface 90 degree angle brush in all the work I do I only always use angle sash I haven't been a painter in a couple of years maybe they have some new techniques out there where it's needed but when I was working in the trades, and I worked in the trades for probably close to 20 years off and on uh, between union and non-union, um, I never used a straight bristle brush. It was always angle sash. But just to give you an example, that's a straight bristle. Now, this one here looks all goofy, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the only thing I found that these straight bristle brushes are good for is a duster brush. This particular duster brush is probably 40 years old. And I still use it to this day. It's straight, 90 degrees, left and right, left and right, top. It's a flat-headed brush. And the only thing I use this for 
is dusting off baseboards, dusting off pieces of wood after I've sanded it, dusting off a wall after I've sanded it. There is no use for this in paint, but that's just my opinion. Maybe you'll have some use for it. If I'm doing, if I'm doing a fence or I'm doing some siding, I'm going to be using small 4-inch rollers, 3-inch rollers. I'll use a sprayer if I have to. There's no need for me to sit there and do one of those, you know, huckleberry thin kind of things where I'm whitewashing a picket fence. It's just, I'll use, I'll use a roller. And what I do is I'll use a roller in one hand and I'll have a brush in the other. I'll roll it on and then I'll brush it through with an angle sash. There's no need for the flat, for the flat brushes. Maybe y'all have some kind of a need for it. I don't know. But anyway, that, that's a no, lesson number one uh, that I learned from my dad was how to choose the right paintbrush for your job. And I really hope that if you guys are looking to uh, start a painting project, you will follow this advice. And I really hope that it will help you get better results. So thank you very much. And check out some of these videos uh, here for other lessons.